ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من همزي ونفخي ونفسي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وقال تعالى في كلامه المجيد يا ايها الذين امنوا قوا انفسكم واهليكم نارا رب اشرح شرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي Indeed all praises due to Allah Rabbul Alamin and may peace and salutations be on our last prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam My dear brothers today's khutbah is about a very important opportunity and a very important responsibility and this opportunity is our own very home My dear brothers Allah Rabbul Alamin has said in the Quran in surah At-Tahrim surah number 66 verse number 6 Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu o you who believe Qu anfusakum wa ahliqum nara save yourselves and your families from the fire of hell and our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith recorded in sahih bukhari and muslim he said kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun ar rayyatihi every one of you is responsible and every one of you will be questioned about those under his charge and then he said wal mar'u ra'in ala baitihi a man is responsible over his house wal mar'atu ra'iyah ala baiti zawjiha wa waladihi and a woman is responsible over her husband's house and over her ch- his children so my dear brothers every single one of us is going to be questioned on the day of judgment about those under our charge you know a person normally is responsible so he likes to use that position that come here listen to me honor me but what about the responsibility we all are going to be questioned on the day of judgment about those under us and my dear brothers a very famous hadith as is recorded in sahih muslim kitab al wasiya our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he said idha mata al insan when a person dies in qata anhu amalu all his good deeds come to an end illa min thalas except from three sources illa min sadaqatin jariya except such sadaqa such charity which is of continuing nature aw ilmin yuntafa bihi or such knowledge from which people benefit aw waladin salihin yaduluhu or right his children who do dua for him so if a person dies and when a person dies all his good deeds they come to a stop can he offer salah now no can he do dua now no can he do any zikr any istighfar no but three things continue Number 1 has he done any such charity from which people are still benefiting number 2 has he left any such knowledge from which people are benefiting and number 3 has he left behind righteous children who do dua for him so that continues to benefit even even after his death now children are also sadaqatul jariyah how when a person has given good tarbiya to his children now he is gone and normally when a person dies his children are normally left behind and the children when they continue to do good deeds so allah rabbul alamin does not forget that who gave the tarbiya to those children who showed them the right way and if the parents have been responsible so the children are sadaqatul jariyah for them and number 2 if he has taught right his knowledge to them then he is they are benefiting from the knowledge they have received from their parents so that second also number 3 when they do dua so that is also included so children fit into all three categories actually but my dear brothers 
we know that children can be sadqa jariya sadqatul jariya yes but they can also be sins of continuing nature do you know that people saw, say children are sadqa jariya but why don't we look at the other dangerous aspect of it that children can also be continuous sins how there's a hadith in sunan ibn majah with authentic chain of narration where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man sanna sunnatan hasana whoever starts a good deed he will get the reward of doing it and he will get the reward of everyone who did it after seeing him so his children saw him doing good deeds and they also did that good deed so he will continue to get their reward without diminishing their reward their reward will not be reduced but a copy of that will go into the account of the person who showed them whom they saw but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not stop here he said wa man sanna sunnata sayyi'a whoever starts a bad deed then he will get the punishment of doing that bad deed and also the punishment of everyone who did that bad deed after seeing him without diminishing their punishment so my dear brothers for example there's a person who started in his house that all of us will gather together and we will read some quran we will read some quran together in the morning so now there's a person who has started in his family and he with his wife his children they are sitting together they are reading the quran with the translation if they don't know arabic with the commentary and after he dies still his children continue to read the quran now because he started it so allah knows who started it now he started it so he will get the reward for example now we know that there are various halaqas and the durus and lectures islamic lectures going on in your own city also now if you start a practice that for example we were at a lecture yesterday where alhamdulillah some people so for, there was separate judgment for sisters also so now a person says okay we will go for the halaqa now after he dies still his children continue to go for the halaqa alhamdulillah he says okay when we sit together we will see some islamic video together we'll see some islamic lecture together he started it and when he died his children continued to see so he continues to get the reward but there are many people who start sins in their homes there are many people who may say that thursday is weekend kind of so we'll sit together and see a movie now how many movies he saw he will get the punishment for that but even after he dies his children continue to see movies on th thursday evening so he continues to get the sin they are getting sins and a copy of that sin is going to the person who started it and that's their father he is continuing to get those sins for example the children saw that my father doesn't go for salah azan came but my father doesn't move so they saw him they saw him not offering salah so now they say okay they also learn that so even after he dies his children are also not offering salah and this is what happens children see parents you we will see parents who do offer salah at home i have seen small children they don't know how to do sajda they will lie down but they will try to offer salah but when they see my father only doesn't offer salah my mother doesn't offer salah so they imitate so after they die the children are also not offering salah and that person continues to get the sin of his children and maybe the children after his children and he's got a full string of continuous sin so my dear brothers family is a big opportunity it is also a big danger if we don't take care of this kullukum masulun ar rayyatihi every single one of you will be questioned about those under his charge every one of us is going to be questioned so my dear brothers let us see 10 points from the quran and the sunnah for protecting our family and for for saving our family and making our family an islamic family step number 1 the first step the question is when does the first step start now for a islamic family to get the sadaqatul jariya when should we start so when we have discussions on the subject so people have different views some people say they say we should start when the child is, has starts to understand something we should start some people say no 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 when he reaches the age of maturity that's when we should start some people say no when he's a small baby boy he can understand still start and some say that no he's in the womb of the mother then only you start giving some positive inputs but the right answer is we should start at the time of selection of spouse a man is selecting his wife and a woman for her her wali is selecting her husband to be now my dear brothers obviously you can get a good building if you have good raw material if you have rotten raw material if you have very poor quality raw material and you expect a great building to come out of it so this is not what normally happens so now our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he taught us as is recorded in sahih bukhari kitab an-nikah he said 
He said, Tunkahu al-mar'atu li arbain. A woman is married for four reasons. Li maliha, for her wealth. Wali jamaliha, for her beauty. Wali hasabiha, for her lineage. Wali diniha, and for her religion. Fuzz far bizati deen taribat yadak. Marry the one with religion. May your hand be in dust. So my, my dear brothers, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he taught us to see religion as number one. So now for example, we find even today, people see that, oh she's beautiful, or oh, she's from a big family, she's wealthy, and these are many people's main criteria. But the main criteria should be religion. And you know some brothers, they say, no, 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 she's not religious, I will make her religious. You will make her religious. Yes, my dear brothers, guidance is not in our hands. Can we make ourselves? Can we guide our own heart? How can we guide someone else? Is it written on her forehead that she will get guided? So many people don't get guided. So many people don't understand. So many people want to be blind to the truth. So many people want to be deaf to the truth. So many people don't realize. Can we guide? Can, can the Prophet Wasallam could he guide his own uncle? So now, it is better to take someone who is already religious. So that's good raw material. Now a building, if it has bad raw material, you cannot get a good building. But, now there are many among us who have already crossed that stage of selection. They have already gone ahead in life. Now, no, no need to lose hope. We can do dua to Allah. We can try our best at home. And Allah can guide anyone. You know, even the worst of the people, Allah is capable of guiding. We can see people whom used, people used to literally worship. Allah guided such people also. Huh? So, so film stars and such singers. So Allah can guide anyone. So don't lose hope. Don't say that my husband is like this or my wife is like this. So uh, the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught for those who have the choice in Hadith and Sunan Tirmidhi with the authentic chain of narration that if a person comes to you from whose religion and from whose akhlaq, character, you are satisfied, then don't refuse. Otherwise there will be fasad on filard. There will be fasad on earth. And my dear brothers, so many people when they select spouses for their daughters, for their sisters, Say how much does he earn? What position does he have? Which company is he working in? This is number one criteria. Let's, let's see it. And you know, there are some religious people, they say, oh, no, no, no. For me, I want a religious girl who is also beautiful, who is also wealthy, and who is also from a big family. So now, how, where do you get such a thing? Something has to be first priority. What is the first priority? So that's step number one, selection of the right spouse. And my dear brothers, this should be the number one criteria, because that is your future investment. If you don't care for your investment, then this is not for you. But if you really care for your investment, then we need to get right your spouse for ourselves, for our daughters. We need to encourage our, our children to get right his children, right his spouse. So this is number one, step number one, step number two. Now you selected a right your spouse, but after that we find that there's a very big problem in our marriage system. Our marriage, marriage system is very faulty. Why? People have made marriage so difficult. Before marriage, there's a big long checklist that by the time you tick, tick, tick and finally reach, so you find that there are many people who are 28 by the time they marry, many brothers, 28, 29, 30. What did the Prophet ﷺ said? He said, Ya Mashra Shabab, O oh, you young men, Man istata minkum ulbata falyatazawaj. Those of you who have the capacity, they should do nikah. Fainnahu aghaddu lil basari. Because nikah will help you to lower your gaze. وَأَحْسَنُ farji And will help you to guard your private parts from zina, from wrong things, from evil deeds. It will help you to protect yourself. And he said, وَإِلَّمْ yastati." And if you don't have capacity, فَعَلَيْكُمْ bisam. Then you fast. So this is the hadith of Sayyid Bukhari. And my dear brothers, our Muslim societies are progressively going away from this. Zina has been made easy and nikah has been made difficult. Do you know many countries in, in Europe? They have an age for marriage and they have a separate age for zina. They say the age of consensual sex. And that age is as low as 12 years in some countries, 14 years in some countries, 16 years in some countries. But for marriage, they say, no, marriage you can't do early. But Islam says that as soon as a person is physically, he's reached the age of buluga, then it's better for him to get married. And how much will she have? How much food will the girl eat? Come on, Allah will give her risk. So my dear brothers, this is the right thing, the right approach is to make marriage easy. Now if someone was to be asked that tell me about the best nikah in your city, the best nikah in this city of yours of Kuwait, which was the best marriage that you attended ever. So people will say, see that marriage, it was so lavish, such great food. But what did the Prophet ﷺ teach us? He taught us 
He said, Afdalun nikah, the best nikah, Aisaruha, is the one which is the easiest, the one which was the simplest. That is the best marriage that you ever attended. The one which is simple, that is the best. So my dear brothers, we find people do lavish expenses. Marriage is very heavy budget, very heavy expenses. And finally, the day you get married, as they say, a relation joins. The relation between a husband and wife, the relation between two families. But do you know, one more relation is established on the day of marriage. And that is the relation mentioned in Surah Al-Isra, Surah 17, verse number 26-27. Allah says, Inna al-mubadhirina kanu ikhwana shayateen. The spendthrifts, they are brothers of shaitan. So they became the brother of shaitan the day he got married. Why? Because on that day he did so much of fuzul culture, so much of spendthriftness, so much of waste, wasteful expenses, that that day he got married, that day he became the brother, the brother of shaitan. So my brothers, don't let this happen. This is a very bad beginning. And a bad beginning can lead to bad consequences. And this is your future investment. So if you want to gather people for food, do find some other day. But don't make it wasteful. You, do you know my brothers? We find examples. A hadith recorded in Sahih Bukhari. In one of the marriages of the Prophet ﷺ, there was nothing to give people in Walima. So he told people that what do you have with you? So some people they brought some, uh, some uh, paneer, some uh, dried curd, yogurt. Some people brought some dates. And they came and ate together. And that was the Walima of the Prophet ﷺ. Imagine... One of our brothers who was very poor before marriage, he used to say that when I get married, I'll tell people that while coming for the Walima, you get some food also with you. So we'll get, come together and eat and that will be Walima. And we have a hadith recorded in Sahih Bukhari where one man, he said, he asked about marriage to a woman and the Prophet ﷺ asked him that, do you have anything to give in meher? He said, no, nothing. He said, do you have an iron ring? He said, I don't even have an iron ring. So the Prophet ﷺ asked him that, do you have, uh, do you know some portion of the Quran? So he said, yes, I know the Qur'an. This will. So Prophet ﷺ said, you teach this Qur'an to her and that will be her meher. And he said in that conversation, he said, I just have this one garment. If I give this, then what will I wear? So now such a man, if he comes in today's times, people will say, you have come for marriage. You've seen your position. Go and earn money and come. But the Prophet ﷺ got him married. So alhamdulillah, my dear brother's marriage is so simple and people have made it so difficult. And zina is easy. Zina is easy, no problems. But marriage has been made difficult. So my dear brothers, this is the second step, that is the right marriage. Third step. Now a person has taken the second step very well, he selected his spouse well, he got married well, but many times things go wrong on the third stage. The third stage is, there are certain roles, rights and responsibilities. The husband has rights, the husband has responsibilities. The woman has rights, she also has responsibilities. My dear brothers, not having the right position of role and responsibilities can lead to catastrophes in marriage. I'll give you an example. See, a car can have only one driver. A car can have one driver. If the person on the passenger seat, even he wants to have some say in the driving wheel, even he wants to pull it, obviously there will be an accident. You can't have two drivers, you can have only one driver. Now this car of marriage has one driver who has been chosen by Allah. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, Surah 4, verse 34, nisa. Men are responsible, they are protectors and maintainers of women. So Allah has given the driving wheel in the hand of the man. Now what do you find in the western world today? In the western world we find today that the husband and wife, they both struggle with the wheel. Sometimes the husband is driving, sometimes the wife is driving, sometimes both of them are struggling. What is the result? The result is, according to census.gov, the American government census website, 49% of marriages, they end up in divorce. So what does Islam teach? Islam says the man is responsible, he will do shura, consultation, with his wife. He will take her suggestions. But someone has to be the main decision maker. So in lawful matters, not in disobeying Allah, in lawful matters, the husband is responsible. So that's his right. But he also has responsibilities. He has to take care. The Prophet ﷺ said, a hadith recorded in Sunan Abu Dawud, he said, what you eat, you feed her. What you wear, you give her. So now, there are so many people who don't spend on the, after their families. They don't spend. They want their in-laws to spend. They want the girl to get from her, father house, from her father's house. And this is very common in, at least in India we see it's very common. Husbands who are not wanting to take responsibility of the family expenses. 
Allah has made them responsible. So imagine a situation where a wife is very rich and a husband is very poor. Still who has to bear the responsibility, financial responsibility? It is the husband. He has to spend. So what he eats, you eat chicken, you have to give her chicken. You can't give her something dry to eat. You, you have to give her the level of food you are eating for yourself, you give her. What you are eating, what clothes you are wearing, you give her. So this is the responsibility. The man has to spend, even if she is very rich, she doesn't have to spend anything from her earning. So you know the western concept is that 50-50. 50 percent of the rent will come from you in the house 50 percent i will pay 50 percent expenses the wife will, wife will wife will pay and 50 percent the husband will pay they say this so we said do you go 50 percent pregnancy or 50 percent in in feeding the child no 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 that is not 50 percent here it's 100 percent on the woman and she has to bear this and my dear brothers there are some apologetic muslims who are very very sad to say why this is like the sea this is my dear brothers let us know we are living on a religion which has not been given by any man, but by Rabbul Alameen, who is Al-Aleem, All-Knowing, Al-Hakim, All-Wise. We are not wiser than him. He knows, we don't know. Now today science has discovered, there have been studies that they have taken slices of brains of different, different people. So they saw that the brain of an American, an African, an Asian, it's the same. But the brain of a man and the brain of a woman, they are not the same. The brains of men are more developed with spatial abilities to be able to take decisions. Decision making skills are far better among men. And women are more connected with their emotions. And that is also needed. She is good in, in her speech also, in that, in that part, in being able to talk. The male speech is only from one side of the brain. But the women, they have the ability of speech from both sides of brain. So there's a stroke, a man has a stroke, wherein his one side, the side which is used for speech, it's impaired, so he can't talk. But if that same stroke, it comes to a woman, she'll still continue to talk, to talk. And Allah has made them emotional so they can understand the emotions of children. If she was not so emotional, then do you know who will care about the child? Who will feel about the child? It's her emotion which helps her to, us to, her to understand. And we have to appreciate that. She's the first school, she's the first teacher for the child. And my dear brothers, so Allah has made us different. So now, step number three is knowing the rights and knowing the responsibilities. Now we've taken three good steps, let's go on to four. Step number four, after selection of the right spouse, having a good Islamic marriage, knowing the rights and responsibilities, now we come into the house and see. So what do we see? My dear brothers, here we are on this day, listening to the khutbah, which is once a week, but there, there is someone in your very homes, maybe, who's speaking 24 hours on different, different channels, who's going to have greater effect on you? And I'm talking about the television. My dear brothers, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, a hadith recorded in Sunan Tirmidhi. He said, A rajulu ala dini khalili. A person is on the religion of his friend. Every one of you should see whom do you make your close friend. Who is your close friend? He has an effect on you. We are human beings. We are weak. What we listen, see we listen to the ayat of the Quran, we listen to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Our iman goes up. But when we are away from this, our iman is affected. So my dear brothers, what do you have in your house? Who is your close friend? So there are people who are spending two, two hours on television. Two hours on television meaning in one year it's 730 hours. In 10 years it's 7300 hours. In 50 years it's how many hours? It's like he spent so many years of his life just watching television. So my dear brothers, this is having an effect. What do you think will happen to the next generation who is under the tarbiyah of the television? And obviously when I talk of the television, we have all of these wrong things that is majorly. Of course there are some good things also. And if you really think you have controlled the wrong and that is no way getting an entry in your home and there is only good thing happening on your television. So we are not opposed to the technology. But we are opposed to the wrong use of technology. If that is happening, what is happening? You know, people say entertainment. And do you know who needs entertainment? People who don't know what is the purpose of life, emptiness of life comes to snatch at them. So they need entertainment. They need to fill their life with entertainment so that they can delude their, themselves for the time being, until they die. After that, there's no delusion. After that, there is results. And this is for those people who don't have any purpose of life. But if you know, my dear brothers, we have not come in this world without a purpose. Allah Rabbul Alameen has created us with, us with a purpose. We are here on an examination and life after death is true and we are going to stand before our creator and we have to answer for every single thing that we did and if we did an atom's weight of good we will see it. If we did an atom's weight of bad, bad, we will see it. 
So my dear brothers, don't let this happen with your children. See, you care about them. This is your future investment. Don't let this happen that you're letting that television be there and all the bad things are going on and music, music. You know what's music? My dear brothers, there's a hadith in Sunan Tirmidhi. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he warned us. He said, Fi hadhi ummah In this ummah, Qasfun wa maskun wa qadafun. He said, in this ummah, people will be made to swallow, to go down into the earth. And their faces will be changed. And on them will be a rain of stones. So the Sahaba, they were afraid. They said, Mata dhaka ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when is that going to happen? So he said, Ida zaharatil qaynaat. When female singers, when they become common, while ma'azif and musical instruments, when they become common, washuribatil khumur, and when alcohol is normally drunk among people, when these three things become common, these three types of punishments will start coming. Three things become common, musical instruments. And now, thanks to the television, our homes are not free from this. Musical instruments have gone in. And my dear brothers, scholars have explained that these three things have been common among non-Muslims since early times. But the Prophet ﷺ is saying, Fi ummah, When in this ummah, these three things become common, meaning when these three things become common among Muslims, so those three types of punishment of the dunya will start coming on them. And now thanks to the television, music has entered into every many homes, most of the homes. And thanks to the mobile ringtones that most brothers have, the music has entered into our masajid also. So now here we have Zaharatil Qainat wal Ma'azif. So my dear brothers, it's something very serious. Now take care of this. This is important. See, you really care for your investment, then don't let this happen with your home. Step number four is stop all these wrong things from your home. If it's there. If it's not there, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Step number five. Now you have stopped the wrong things. Stopping wrong things, we have to get good things inside. If you don't get good things inside, the bad things will again start coming back. So make them busy in good things. And what good things can you fill into your home? My dear brothers, fill your home with Islamic knowledge, with Islamic tarbiyah, with lectures from the Quran, from the Sunnah, with tarbiyah. It's the truth, my dear brothers. You're making them aware about the truth. Most of mankind, they are blind. They are not seeing the truth even after seeing it. So my dear brothers, let, those, let not this happen at home. So now fill your home with good tarbiyah. Sit. And I'll tell you, my brothers, you can listen to the lectures which I and other khatib are giving. This does not have that much of an effect as if you learn one ayat of the Quran, one hadith, and you tell your son that my son, this is what the Prophet ﷺ said. This is what Allah has said in the Quran. And that will touch him in a manner which we can't touch. The way you can touch your child, your children, they are under your tarbiyah. You are going to be asked about them. So my dear brothers, what you tell after learning, this has a great effect on the child, on the thinking of the child. See my dear brothers, you know what's the matter? Children, they are getting molded. They're getting molded. And like for example, you must have seen some trees which are crooked. Crooked. Now how are they crooked? When they were young and flexible, that time they became crooked. And now after growing up, they are fixed crooked. Now you can't make them straight. They are curved and bent and crooked. They can't become straight because they became crooked at that time. So now the child is learning things. And if you can give tarbiyah, so this is the key thing, my dear brothers. So bring in good things in your home. Bring in Islamic lectures, take CDs, connect with authentic sources, go for halaka, dars, make them busy in good things. If they are busy in good things, there won't be any time left for bad things. But if it is empty, then shaitan will try to come back. This is point number five. Step number six. Now, alhamdulillah, we've ensured five steps. But what happens to your child after he goes out? After he goes out, so now where is he? He's in school, he's with his friends. Children spend major part of their time in school. Now what is happening in school? See my dear brothers, the Prophet ﷺ said, a hadith recorded in Sahih Bukhari, he said that مَثَلُ الْجَلِيسِ الصَّالِحِ وَالْجَلِيسِ السُّو كَمَثَلِ صَوْحِ بِالْمِسْكْ وَكِيرِ الْحَدَّاد The example of good company and bad company is that of the seller of perfume and the blacksmith. For the seller of perfume, إِمَّا تَشْتَرِهِ Either you'll buy something, some of it, or or at least you'll get the good smell. وَكِيرِ الْحَدَّادِ يُحْرِكُ بَدَنَكْ أَوْ ثَوْبَكْ أَوْ تَجِدُ مِنْهُ رِيحًا خَبِيثًا Either it will burn your body or your garment, at least you'll get the bad smell. So now if they are with, in the bellows of the blacksmith, so now we have to see what's happening. My dear brothers, there are people in schools and there are today, mashallah, the concept of Islamic schools and schools with an Islamic theme and where they are using these tender years of the child to mold him into Islam and also seek Islam worldly knowledge. 
See, you know what, my dear brothers? While learning worldly knowledge, if we forget Allah, we are destroyed. We have to seek that knowledge while remembering Allah Rabbul Alameen. So point number six is, that what is the state outside? What is the state? Outside, when they go outside. Step number seven. Now, mashallah, you are doing six good steps. So, action, amal. Now, after all of this, there should be good amal. So, in step, step number seven, we are looking at amal. My dear brothers, what is the state of action at home? The Prophet ﷺ said, he said, مَثَلُ الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي يُسْكَرُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ وَالْبَيْتِ الَّذِي لَا يُسْكَرُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ كَمَثَلِ حَيِّي وَالْمَيِّتِ The example of a house in which there is, Allah is mentioned. And a house in which Allah is not mentioned is the example of a living person and a dead person. So now a person, a house which is living and a house which is dead. So my dear brothers, don't let your house die. And be active in it. So now Allah says in the Quran in Surah Taha that, مُرُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ بِسْوَلَىٰ Allah says in the uh, Prophet Sallallahu said in a hadith, مُرُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ بِسْوَلَىٰ وَهُمْ أَبْنَاءُ سَبِينَ your, your children become seven years old, command them to offer salah. وَدْرِبُوهُمْ عَلَيْهَا وَهُمْ أَبْنَاءُ وَشْرِينَ and if they do become 10 years and still not offering salah, then وَدْرِبُوهُمْ alayha, Beat them. Obviously, beating on the face is not allowed. This beating is not to remove your anger. It's not as a boxing bag. It is as tarbiyah. So now, for example, there's a child you say, Congratulations, very good, my son. And you give him a pat on his back. He won't feel so bad. But you give that same pat, you didn't offer salah. Patak. So now, it's tarbiyah for him. Now, a person, he does that. You didn't offer salah. Number one, first day. Second day, the third day the child will say, Papa, Abba, you also didn't offer salah. Huh? So if we are not offering salah, then how are we going to act on this? So my dear brothers, we have to be acting on it. We have to be acting on it so that they also imitate and they become good and for our own selves. See, if we do ku and fusakum, save yourselves, then we can save wa ahlikum nara. Then we can save our families. You know, some people have the concept that I can't save myself, but I want my children to be safe. So it's like you are standing in Jahannam and you want to tell your children, children, go there, Jannat is over there. But this is not going to happen. Save yourselves and your families. If we don't save ourselves, we can't save our families. So being active in Amal, my dear brothers. Udkhulu fi silmi kafa. Enter into Islam wholly and fully. So this is point number seven. Point number eight. Is that mashallah you're doing seven? So now, point number eight is seven and eight are connected. It's easier to learn that way. Seven number was doing good things. Eight number is removing all the wrong things from home. What do, what do we mean? is every person in the family should do udkhulu fi silmi kafa and remove his shortcomings. So now for example, somebody's wife, she's not good in hijab. So now, it's the responsibility of the husband. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, he said three kinds of people will not go to Jannah. Among them, one person is the youth who is happy with the, the obscenity in his house. He's happy with it, I'm happy with it. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, this man won't go to Jannah. His wife is obscene, is, doing, is not acting on the Islamic principles, but he won't go to Jannah. Because he is not fulfilling his responsibility as the leader in the house. He's happy with the wrong thing happening in his house. So my dear brothers, is that, for example, some sister is weak in hijab. And do you know when you want to seek the, see the weakness of any society, you can try to look at the marriages and Eid. You look at marriages, how women are decked up and how hijab is not taken care of. See, let them do even if they are among themselves, it's a different issue. But if there are some men are present over there and they're looking, so there's hijab. So now, for example, what is the, the her, this in hijab? For example, there's a brother who's not keeping a beard. Now, our beloved Prophet ﷺ, he commanded us. He commanded us. He said, Awfulluha, leave your beard. Don't, don't, don't shave your beard. Leave your beard. So my dear brothers, it's a command of the Prophet. He did not say, leave if you want. If you don't want, don't leave. He didn't say. He said with a command. And Allah Ta'ala has said in the Quran in Surah Hadith, He said, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَقُزُوهُ وَمَا نَحَاكُمْ أَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ What the Prophet gives you, take it. What he stops you from, leave it. So now the sister will encourage her husband. She will encourage her to keep a beard. Now so many brothers, they don't keep beards because of their wives. Say, my wife doesn't like my beard. Okay, for the sake of your wife, you're leaving your beard. Now will she remove her hair for your sake? No, no. My dear brothers, this is a command of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A Muslim has to love what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us. So I encourage all the brothers, bring in an environment at home where everyone is entering into Islam completely. So this is step number eight. Step number nine, you're doing eight good things, mashallah. But there are so many homes where there's no discipline at all. So step number nine is what is the discipline at home? So we find, for example, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, we, we have about him in the hadith recorded in Sahih Bukhari. Yakrahu kana yakrahu nawma qabla lishai wal hadith abadaha. 
the Prophet ﷺ used to dislike to uh, sleep before Isha and he used to dislike to talk to people after Isha. After Isha, his schedule would be go to bed early. And he said, as a hadith recorded in Sahih Bukhari, he said, There is barakah in the morning of my ummah. In the morning there is barakah. So you try to get the barakah, get, get up early. And he said, Take the afternoon nap, the light afternoon nap. Because shayateen, they don't do qalula, they don't take this nap. So my dear brothers, having some discipline, some timing, some discipline at home, so that everything we want to achieve, we manage to achieve, so that we can get the blessing which Allah Rabbul Alameen has kept for this ummah. So this is step number 9. And step number 10, sometimes some marriages don't end up happy. There are people who just can't manage together. In such a situation, what to do? So now there are people we see in our country, I'm from Bombay and I've come on a, for a few days. So we see normally when Muslims, even Muslims, when they have fights, husbands and wives, so like slinging mud in the public and going to courts and filing false cases that he is asking for dowry and false cases, the husband is saying something else. So this is something common. Islam has said that even when problems come, you can't forget your deen. You can't forget Allah. And Allah has said, Wasulhun khair, there is good in sulah in having reconciliation. So there should be, it should be done. Wala tansona fadlam bainakum. Don't forget goodness among yourselves. So Islam has taught that even when problems come, they have to be resolved in a beautiful way. So now there are these problems about the method of divorce. So there are so many problems about the method of divorce, people don't know, and they are big time problems. Uh, they are big time problems, and uh, it, it, it will take some time, but there is big time trouble. In this part, 10th part, that is the troubleshooting part. If some, some problem is something is not going well, how to solve it? And there are people also who, who are there, you are waiting, that two people are fighting, so then they sit there with, uh, you know, with oil, to add oil into the, into the fire. So now, this is not the thing, this should not be the thing. As the Prophet wasallam said, as is, in the, is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Hujurat, he said, Allah Rabbul Alameen has said, that innamal mu'minuna ikhwa, believers are brothers. So, we should not forget this. Faslihu bayna khawaikum. Do sulah among your brothers. So my dear brothers, these were 10 steps. Obviously, there are many more steps in the Quran, in the Sunnah. And finally, the question is whether you want to achieve it. The question is whether we want this big time investment that we go from the world and still, you know, it's like we have meters in taxi. You leave the meter on and you go. So the meter is going up and up. So we go from this world and we have the meter down where our children are sadaqatul jariya for us. They are, they are doing good deeds. And we continue to get the benefits of those good deeds. People talk of changing society, changing the world. We cannot change society until we don't change the smallest unit of society. And the smallest unit of, unit of society is our very homes. And if we work on this, this is so important. Inshallah, changing society is not difficult. If every home changes, changing the society is not difficult. Finally, we do dua to Allah Rabbul Alameen. That may Allah Rabbul Alameen make us realize the importance of walking on the straight path and make us capable of all the sacrifices that are needed. May Allah Ta'ala make us those who do sincerely repent and come back to the straight path. May Allah make our brothers who are in difficulties, may Allah solve their difficulties. May Allah Rabbul Alameen help all our brothers throughout the world, wherever they are, in all the difficulties they are facing and help them with help from himself. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin min kulli dham wa astaghfirullah wa al-gafurur rahim.